You might think of Newcore Steel as a giant recycling center, since the finished products from this mini mill are made almost entirely from steel scrap. The raw material, at a staggering 10 million pounds per day, provides a recycling rate near 100%. In fact, at the end of the entire process, what's left is just this pile of materials known as slag, and even the slag is used in the construction of railroads and highways, so there's virtually no waste. But let's start back at the beginning. The trucks, filled with scrap metal, arrive early in the morning and keep coming all day long. The trucks are weighed coming in, the load is evaluated for content, and then sorted into piles according to its grade of quality. The next step in the process is a little like making a pot of soup. The recipe varies depending on what grade of steel is being made. All the way from hard to soft and flexible. But the ingredients remain basically the same. Scrap metals mixed with alloys like manganese and carbon. But after this point, it's nothing like making soup. In the furnace, three giant electrode rods are submerged into the mixture of scrap. When it reaches a temperature of 3100 degrees Fahrenheit and in a liquid state, the electrodes are withdrawn from the bubbling molten metal bath. It's at this point that the molten material is checked for its chemical content. Calculations are made to determine the exact amount of carbon and manganese, which are to be added in order to bring the mixture up to the grade of steel being produced. When the temperature is correct, the ladle moves into position under the furnace, and the batch of steel or heat is tapped into the ladle and the carbon and manganese are added. A bag of lime is opened above the giant ladle to create a layer of insulation trapping the intense heat inside. Next, 175 ton overhead cranes move the 85 ton ladle slowly across the room to be stirred. Here, the batch of liquid steel is sampled again to double check its chemistry. Beneath the massive ladle is a sliding gate. When the nozzle is opened, the hot fluid flows out into what's known as a tun dish. This is an intermediary container designed to control the flow of molten metal. From there, the red-hot liquid steel streams out into four molds, shaping it into rectangular form. And even though the four channels look like solid glowing roller coaster rails, the centers are still liquid. The steel rails, called billets, begin to cool more rapidly now as they continue to travel out of the caster area and into the light of day. The billets are periodically weighed as they move along. A computer controls the torches, which cut them into 20 by 40 foot lengths, depending on the weight. Then the billets are stacked into the billet storage yard until needed in the rolling mill, or for shipments to outside customers. Before the billets can be shaped, they must be heated again but this time to a much lower temperature of 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. In the rolling mill, the hot, pliable billets can be rolled and conformed into their final shape. The rolling mill is a series of powerful turning rolls working together in pairs to shape the reheated billets. Tremendous pressure is exerted on the billets as they move through the mill. The rolls themselves must be showered with a constant spray of water to keep them cool. This water is also recycled. After cooling the rolls, the water, now hot, runs off into the pipes beneath the floor, where it is pumped back outside to cooling towers so the same water can be used again and again. The rolls continue to shape the hot, pliable billets until at the end of the process where they have taken the form of the finished steel product. The bar exits the mill at a speed of 2700 feet per minute and is transferred over via the hotbed to the final stage of bundling.
Once the steel leaves the rolling mill in its finished form, it proceeds to a continuous cut-to-length shear, where it's automatically measured and cut to standard or custom lengths to fulfill the customer's requirements. Angles, for instance, are collected into 4-ton packages to be stored or shipped directly off the mill. Next, the product is bundled together using a computer-controlled robotic bundling machine. Depending on the day and production needs, the billets might be transformed into various sizes of rebar, plane rounds, angles, or flats. Once again, with the use of 10 to 35 ton overhead cranes, the bundles are moved to another location. This time, the bundles are stacked in a warehouse, climate controlled for heat and humidity to prevent rust. From here, the steel is loaded onto trucks to be shipped all over the continent, and the recycling process is complete. New Core Steel. It starts with piles of scrap, adds intense heat, water, and a lot of human power, ingenuity, and sweat to make the steel you use every day.